This is a 1974 Volkswagen thing. It's slow, it's funny looking, it has no amenities, and it has absolutely no safety equipment of any kind. It's also a rental car. <laughs> Today is going to be a fun day. Before I tell you about this thing, let me tell you about things in general. The thing was originally conceived as a West German military vehicle in the 60s. Sales in the US started in the 70s to civilians. Now in Mexico it was called the Volkswagen Safari, but in the US there was already a car called the Pontiac Safari. So Volkswagen got together with a group of marketers and designers and engineers and product planners and they said, what should we call it? And someone said, I've got it, the thing. I'm in Minneapolis to drive this thing at Maury's Heritage Car Connection, which is an exotic and vintage rental car firm operated by a car dealership group out here. But unlike your typical wall-to-wall -wall Lamborghinis with rims, they have weird stuff like this Volkswagen thing that you can rent. But then that begs the question, why would anyone want to rent this Volkswagen thing? It certainly isn't the amenities because the Volkswagen thing has none. Allow me to take you on a little tour. The first thing you find when you open the door is wood flooring, which is exactly what you want in your deck. Interestingly, the wood flooring is removable. I, I don't know if this was a fence at one point or you're probably wondering, does the passenger side have any cool amenities? No. It has nothing, except for two little things. One of which is a grab handle that isn't really on here all that tight and frankly shakes the entire car. The other is the front hood release. Now that we're under the hood, let's take a look at what we got. Well, there's the spare tire and there's also a little plaque that insists you put in 91 octane premium. <laughs> Can you imagine buying this thing and then having to put in premium? Here's another great thing detail. The wipers work, and they work pretty well, but there's only one wiper motor. It's attached to this wiper, and then this wiper is attached with a cable. So basically what happens is you turn on the wipers, the motor moves this wiper, and this one is just kind of along for the ride. The windshield folds down. You might already know this. Now, but the problem is they really wanted windshield wipers. So when the windshield is folded down, it's kind of resting on the wipers and sitting directly in your line of sight is the giant windshield wiper motor. Still, tell me this isn't pretty cool. So now you've parked your thing overnight and you've closed the top and shut the windows because you don't want anybody to break in. Which by the way is a hilarious idea because the front doors lock and the rears don't. So how do you get the roof off? Actually it's pretty easy. Just two latches by the windshield, one here and one here, then throw the top back, get out, undo two more latches, one on either side and then it's down. But now that the roof's off, what do you do about the windows? Well you have two options, you can either unbutton the front window open up the flap and get a little air in or if you want the window all the way down see a window <laughs> you also wouldn't want to rent a thing to check out its advanced safety equipment because there is no safety equipment airbags and electric brakes traction control none of that stuff is around that much is obvious what might not be so obvious is just how little protection the thing has from any type of collision. Allow me to demonstrate. I've parked a run-of-the-mill Ford F-150 next to the thing, the most popular car in America. Imagine getting hit with one. It wouldn't be pretty. It especially wouldn't be pretty because of the thing's side crash structure. The B pillar and C pillar, oh yeah, those don't exist. There's only an A pillar, it's the windshield frame and it can be folded away. In fact, the thing's only real side crash protection is this panel. And I don't think that's really gonna stop an impact from an SUV or certain larger insects. And then there are the doors. I wish you could feel how flimsy these doors felt over the internet. But suffice it to say, there's probably a team of engineers working on the Porsche 911 GT3 desperately trying to get their doors as lightweight as the doors were on the 1974 Volkswagen thing. 
And then there's the size. The thing clearly hails from a different era because that F-150 at 148 inches in length, the thing fits in its wheelbase. You also wouldn't rent a thing for its performance. Don't be fooled by the strangely large hood. The thing's engine is in back and it makes 46 horsepower. You could probably outrun a thing on foot, even if you didn't know you were racing it. The thing is also hilarious to look at. It looks like the kind of military vehicle that you would get if you gave a child a pencil and a piece of paper in 20 minutes. Just look at all the squared wheel arches and the fender flares and the boxy right angles trying to be tough. And then you look at it and you can't help but just giggle. It's crazy. Imagine encountering one of these things in battle. You're sitting there behind enemy lines trying to hold the hill with your, with your fellow soldiers off to the side and then the enemy drives up in a thing. You'd burst out laughing, you'd have no other choice. And then of course you would destroy it using a rock. So why would you want to rent a thing? Because it is absolutely hilarious to drive. It is impossible not to smile as you drive this car. <laughs> that makes a lot of noise. Of course, I'm going 14. I can't believe I'm driving this. This is so, such a ridiculous car. The acceleration is minimal uh, to be charitable, although it does make a lot of noise. So you feel like you gotta upshift. So I upshift first at 15 miles an hour, <laughs> and second is 25 miles an hour. So now I'm deep into third at about 29, 31. The brakes aren't as bad as they are in a lot of older cars. I suspect that's because this thing weighs about as much as a shrub. There's a guy with a leaf blower. He's got as much power as I do. It's so cool. It's crazy how slow this thing is. Crazy. But you know, you give it time and it does get up to the speed of traffic. This is a car you could legitimately drive around roads. I don't know if I'd take it on the highway. You know, I have to admit, there are some things, it's missing a lot of features, but there's some things that I'm impressed with how modern it is. The pedal feel is pretty good. The turn signals cancel. The wipers work fine. The signal stocks actually have a pretty good tactile feel to them, which is weird. They feel like they're in like a modern Audi. And of course, then I look down and then half the floor is wood and half the floor is orange. So, well, this is great. This is fun. This is a hilariously fun car. God, I, I love this thing. But you know what would make it even more fun? It's a little windy here. I can't see anything. I'm gonna try to hide behind the wiper motor. Everybody is staring at me. Now that the, wind, the windshield's down, there's not a single person in Minneapolis who doesn't think I'm nuts. Man, if we roll over right now, the roll cage is my skull. I wonder what kind of mileage this gets. Of course, we'll never know because the fuel gauge is now permanently reading zero. Could be empty, uh, but given that I'm driving around in a car steering at a windshield wiper motor, I bet that it's just broken. This is great. Isn't this the life? Getting bombarded with air while we go 12 miles an hour under the speed limit. I've driven a lot of weird cars, but as I sit here with the windshield down, staring at a wiper motor in a bright orange Volkswagen, where first gear ends at 14 miles an hour, I gotta say, this might just be the weirdest. So my verdict on the thing, it's unsafe, it doesn't have any amenities, it's not, it's not well equipped, it's slow, but, but it's an experience that everybody should have. <laughs> So there you have it, that's the Volkswagen thing. Please click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer for more of my thoughts on the thing in all of its bright orange glory. You're probably wondering, does the passenger side have any cool amenities or features? Power windows? They're in, or if you want the whole window down, if you want the window all the way down, or if you want the window all the way down, 